the inauguration coming on Monday. Yes. And actually, it, it comes Sunday. He's just the, what, the seventh you know, president to do this? Exactly. Now, the Constitution states that every January 20th of an inaugural year, the president must be sworn in at noon. If that falls on a Sunday, then the ceremony will be on Monday, but he still has to be sworn in right. because we can't be without a president for 24 hours. Right. So President Obama will be sworn in this Sunday at noon by the Chief Justice Roberts in the Blue Room of the White House. They'll release a photograph. It won't be a large event by any means. And then 24 hours later, he'll take it in front of the country on the west front of the Capitol. So that's a little trivia there for you. And, and for Sunday, in the Blue Room, he's going to use the Robinson Family Bible to take the oath upon. It was a family gift given by Mr. Robinson to Mrs. Robinson for Mother's Day years back. So And then he'll use two different back. Bibles, right, on Monday? Exactly. You know, the inaugural is so traditional. Many presidents struggle with, well, how can I put my signature on this inaugural? I was going to ask you, how do they make and it And they get to do it a couple of ways. One is by choosing the Bible. And on Monday, President Obama will use Abraham Lincoln's Bible, which he did at his first inauguration. Oh, he but he'll him. also use a second Bible. He'll use the Traveling Road Bible of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. So they'll be placed on top of each other. This has been done a few times before. And sometimes they're open, sometimes they're closed, sometimes they're open in haste to any verse, sometimes it's the Beatitudes or, or certain verses that would be released on Monday after the inauguration. Yeah, I'm, I'm just It'll glad that Spielberg made the Lincoln movie because uh, our, our kids growing up thought he was a vampire hunter. For <laughs> for at least a few weeks. I'm glad Spielberg cleared that up. <laughs> yes. I, 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 what a testament to him. Yes, it's good. Um, the other cool thing is he gets to pick the musicians. And this year's inauguration on the west front of the Capitol is going to have Beyonce, mm. James mm -hmm. Taylor, and Kelly Clarkson. That's an, do you find that pick interesting, or do you think it's it is? Well, Beyonce and James Taylor are both large fundraisers for President Obama. You know, it's very much pop culture compared to yeah. other years. Having Jesse Norman, an opera singer, or Aretha Franklin, somebody who's had years and years and years mm -hmm. of contributions to the civil rights movement as well as as singing. But it's his pick. Yeah. Well, why do you think choose. that's an interesting pick? I mean, Beyonce's a megastar. She's singing at the Super Bowl. Yeah, when you say like but the Aretha Franklin, like you think of just the, I don't know. More, he's a, he does, because she sang it last at the inaugural ball. Mm -hmm. yeah. Remember, so maybe he's just a big B fan. She, yeah, she is. Well, and, I think, and she's a big I fan. Think, I think most men are big B fans. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, the parade goes from Capitol Hill to the White House, and, and mm -hmm. he'll actually walk in this parade. He will. You know, it's a hot mile and a half. The Carters were the first to walk the parade. The Reagans opted to just peek out of their sunroof and wave, which yeah. was, it looked like they were going down the Vegas strip yeah. for there. <laughs> um, but all the presidents since then have walked, and so many people say, oh, my my gosh, they are so exposed. Yeah. How can the Secret Service yeah. let them do that? Well, among other things that we'll never know, they do uh, block off a hundred square block radius of downtown. People that have tickets for the parade in the bleachers walk through magnetometers. They've got snipers along the rooftops. They have them in the windows. They know who's rented out the hotels right. along Pennsylvania they Avenue. And if you look at that picture that's on the screen right now, Behind them is the parade limo, of course armored, and the gentlemen around that and the, and the one female there are with the PPD, the Presidential Protective Division. They are there to take them wherever they need to go. They have plenty of egresses. They've practiced many, many different scenarios out at their training grounds in Beltsville. And um, those SUVs, they're not empty. They're holding the cat team, the counter assault team, the guys in the full armor with the big guns. So right. they're well guarded, and it's 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 a phenomenal event. So when you were there during these inaugural mm -hmm. processes, what what were you doing? Like where where are you? Were you busy oh working? Were you God. like at it some point like thinking, oh my God? Here you have to take that breath and, yeah. and, and just say, wow, take it in, because it goes so fast. Well, in 1996 at the time, I was director of television before I was the director of events. So I was with him the whole day doing all live interviews and all the press coverage that mm -hmm. we were doing. So I was up at the Capitol, did the motorcade to the Capitol with him, got to sit on the platform with the rest of the senior staff, um, as well as the Supreme Court justices, VIP family, and, and members of Congress sit up there. And then I walked the parade with them and on the flatbed right in front of them with the press corps and did all all of our balls that night. Clinton had the most balls of any president. Mm. We did 11 to 30. Yeah, wait. <laughs> <laughs> they thought it was too much. He was like, he liked it. He was like, he liked it. He did. <laughs> because went to all the balls that night. He and Mrs. Clinton both well, went so to So how many? One. You said he had the most ever. He had 14 on a second run. Yeah, so 14. 14. And this happened party. all in one night? All over Washington, all in one night. It took us about four and a half, almost five hours to go to the mall because, you know, Clinton doesn't just go in, yeah. say a few words and leave. Yeah. He goes in, they did the, always their first dance. He gets phone and then numbers. They work a real <laughs> oh, Ryan. Ryan, <laughs> you stop it. Hey, I love President Clinton. Not
She's never heard that joke. <laughs> he's, you know, he's done his own job to give you that fodder. We'll, we'll give you that. Yes. But, um, but it was really a great experience. Now, the Obamas last time around had 10 inaugural balls. Mm -hmm. And this year, they're just having two. You know, they wanted to reflect the frugality of the time. Mm -hmm. But let me let you in on a little something. Last year, six of the 10 balls were at the Washington Convention Center. Okay. This year at the Washington Convention Center will be the Commanders in Chief Ball. Well, that's something that George W. Bush started. It's okay. for the past Medal of Honor recipients. It's for active and retired military. Three tickets, which is just fabulous. Brad Paisley's performing there this year. Mm -hmm. Free ticket. Free tickets. Free tickets for the military. Oh, okay. For the military, for the Commanders in Chief oh. Ball. Sorry, Val. I was going to go. Sorry, Val. Tickets are free. <laughs> I did want to mention that ABC, of course, will start their coverage on Sunday, and including ABC 7 Chicago, will be sending, of course, political reporter Charles Thomas, Cheryl Burton, and Jason Knowles. So All right. check that out here. Okay, so we're going to take a well, short break. The, here's the, oh. the, the one other ball, it's the size of five. They're taking up the rest of the convention center. Really? So it's two balls, but they're the size of six. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Again, insert your own joke. <laughs> Hello, thank you so much for stopping.